sit. Good sit. Good sit. That'd be an interesting filming session if you're yelling at me through the door. <laughs> <laughs> well, it might be an interesting one then. <laughs> Right? That scare you? I'm sorry. <laughs> that means there's a lot of these sheeps around. Uh, these sheeps. <laughs> no. Hi, welcome to Fiber Love Diary. I'm Trish if we haven't met, and if we have met, welcome back. You're probably a subscriber and I appreciate you. You're awesome and you're part of my tribe. The people who love wool a lot. That's the tribe. <laughs> We're gonna make t-shirts. Hey, how are you? So this is the channel where I document my journey with, I guess, fiber arts. I'm trying to make sure I cover everything with crafts and fiber arts. How about that? We are working on a breed study right now. This is episode 11. I'm no longer shocked because this breed study has obviously changed my life and now I'm a person who does things on time. That's who I am now. <laughs> I didn't know this breed study would change my life, but here we are. This week we have two breeds that I'm excited to spin. They're both down breeds and I love down breeds and I have plenty of both of these in my stash. Last week I mentioned I had a lot of Suffolk, but I actually have a lot of both. Let's find my glasses, shall we? Oh, we're gonna clean these. <laughs> no momento. Woo, all right. Not that clean, but we're gonna go with it. So I'm using the Fleece and Fiber source book as my primary information source. If I go anywhere else, I will definitely tell you it's an awesome book. And if you want it, you can get it below. Some people are buying the like in paper in person version nothing wrong with that i only buy the digital version number one because i don't want to store it i have always been in love with books and i finally transitioned to digital and it just works for me but if a regular book in person works for you that's cool the other nice thing about the digital though is like anywhere I have a Kindle app, I can pull this book up. So I could pull it up on my phone because I have the Kindle app on my phone. I can use it on my Kindle. I can pull it up on my laptop. So anywhere I am, as long as I have internet access, this book is with me and that's why I like the digital version. But you do you, you know how I am. I think you should do what works for you. We're in the final third of the original breed study. Uh, I'm just, I guess I will be kind of sad to see it finish. I've learned so much and you know I've spun a lot of these before there have also been a significant amount I've never spun but I've spun a lot of them and I still feel like I learned a lot so I hope that you guys are learning a lot too or maybe you're just hanging out with me and spinning or knitting or I don't know <laughs> watching your dog make circles and try to make the comfiest bed out of a blanket I don't know what you're doing but I'm glad you're here with me. So these are all going in a playlist. If you decide you wanna look up a specific breed later or you wanna do your own breed study, you'll be able to find them all in the playlist. Don't worry, and that actually makes it kinda of nice because you don't have to search for them. They're just all in one place. We're gonna start with South Down. We're starting with the South Down. And um, I will say it feels very fluffy. It's not super soft, but it's definitely it doesn't feel coarse it's pretty so it's kind of soft it feels really lofty and puffy I've talked a little bit about this there are different ways of dividing fleeces up into like families or groups or however you want to talk about it but one of them that's definitely accepted is called the down breeds and so this is part of the down families we have spun down breeds before but I'm gonna just give a really brief explanation from the not from the book, summarizing the book, on what that actually means. Here are some breeds included. Dorset Horn, Hampshire Downs, Oxford Downs, Shropshire, South Downs, and Suffolk's. They all have colored faces. I did not know that. It says they're, they're relatively short, um, usually two to four inches. Also it says, traditionally the fleeces are don't have any color. 
I have some dark South Downs in my stash, but like it says, traditionally. You guys, I did not know this. And I've been referring to down breeds for like almost 15 years probably. This says down refers to where they all originated. So it's the downs or the downlands of England. These breeds were traditionally developed for me. Generally large sheep, user prolific, frequently having twins and triplets. That means there's a lot of these sheep around. Down wools are very springy, elastic, and strong, and they're good for socks, but also sweaters, hats, mittens, and blankets. Some other characteristics. It usually is a bit chalky, so not lustrous, which, I mean, it's not always what you want, right? It doesn't felt especially well, which also makes it nice for socks and things that are gonna get um, some friction. And it says you may be able to machine wash it. You can do some. It adds resiliency when blended with a long wool. I don't, I can't even picture that, but it sounds like an experiment that we need to try. This picture does not do these sheep justice. They are so cute. This is the one they gave me, so here we go. Oh my gosh, I didn't know this. It says this is the like parent breed all the that the other down breeds were developed. So these date back to medieval times, it says. Wow, okay, so throughout the 19th century, the South Down, it says, was a central sheep on every Sussex Hill farm. They're a little bit smaller than a lot of the traditional down and the like ones that have come from it. It says since there's a lot of different strains of South Downs, there's kind of a range, four to six pounds, kind of small. And then the bigger ones give like a seven to 12 pound fleece. And that's pretty good size actually. One and a half to four inch staple, mostly two to three inches. That has definitely been kind of where I've had them. 23 to 29 microns, that sounds about Mm, that's something I would say about right and then it says if you get the dark ones which I do have a couple dark ones in my stash there those micron counts are a little bit higher so it's a little coarser shorter fleeces can be carded longer ones will want to be flicked or combed spin to maintain the loft and springy character oh and it does say to keep the twist moderate at moderate levels I would imagine because it is stronger that if you put too much twist in it's going to be not ropey but like Diff. It says it's best known for being overlooked as a fiber resource. Well, no more. Okay, let's get my ruler. We're gonna check the staple. Okay, this is gonna be a shorter one. Let's get to the ends. Looks like just a tiny, tiny bit over four inches, but you can see, here, let's get it in front of the black shirt that there is a lot of loft and spring. See how that's springing back? I can feel how elastic it is in my fingers and you can't always do that with top. So definitely we'll be spinning this. A woolen draw, I may try long draw. I'll probably go long draw with this. Let's go spin it. I'm excited for this one. We're done spinning. So a lot of surprises here actually. Let's get into it, shall we? This is the South Down. 
It's actually a lot whiter than it looks in the light or maybe it's in comparison to the Suffolk it looks a lot whiter. It's very very squishy and what I really do associate with a down breed it has like not a lot of drape and I did keep the twist quite low. Traditional long draw almost. It was really easy to spin consistently and I really like it a lot. It's just got that kind of cottony look um, and no luster look that I do think of with a down braid. So I really, I, this was a very nice spin. And look, it's got a lot of bounce, a lot of bounce. You could even tell when I was drafting how much spring back it was going to have in it because when I let up the tension, it got shorter before it got drawn into the wheel. It was crazy, but I like it. I mean, no surprise that I like this, but it is actually really, really enjoyable to spin. It was easy to spin very even, and it turned out really, really squishy and beautiful. Because of what the Fleece and Fiber source book said about keeping the twist low, I did try not to get too much twist in it, and I think that was a smart plan. And even though it was top, like I said, so much spring. But I loved it and I have a couple of south down fleeces in my fleece closet downstairs that have been washed and it really made me want to drag them out and get on them. So love. On to the Suffolk, right? Exciting. I've spun quite a bit of this. Did not know this. Suffolk sheep came from the South Down, which as we talked about earlier, is kind of the root of all the down breeds. And old style Norfolk horn ewes. They were recognized as a breed over 200 years ago. They hit North America in 1888. They are the most common breed in North America. I have to say that does make sense to me. It seems like you can find them here really easily. Because they're mostly grown for meat, a lot of shepherds don't even think about putting them out for spinners. It says it's bulky and has good insulating properties. I did not know that. There's really not a ton more about Suffolk here, but there is a couple of the sheep. Okay. Fleece weight, four to eight pounds. Um, kind of like in the middle of the road. Staple length, two to three and a half inches. I personally love a Suffolk and they're hard to felt. Fiber diameter, 25 to 33 microns. Natural colors, white. There could be a few black fibers mixed in. For usage, it says that down breeds, the usage is all pretty similar. I have found that Suffolk's don't felt very much and I can use them for socks and wash them in my washing machine without changing anything and they don't felt. It's really nice. Not luminous, takes dye nicely. Um, medium handling wool, nice and versatile. Keep the drafting light and the twist moderate, so same. That way you keep the loft in the spring. Card shorter fleeces, flicker comb the long ones, same. Says the, even the same items that it makes a good one for. Like all down wools being unnecessarily overlooked by hand spinners. Oh. All right, so this Suffolk is not white and it says right in there it should only be white. So figure that out. It feels pretty soft. It feels like a down breed. I don't know how to describe that feeling. I think you just have to like try it out. And let's check a staple. Wow, this is way longer than any Suffolk I've ever seen. Do not expect a fleece that you buy from a local shepherd to be long like this, because I've never seen that. It is over five inches long. Again, you can see that it's got a good amount of like loft to it but it does not have the, I can feel in my fingers, it's not as elastic as the South Down. We'll see how I spin this. All right, first time ever with colored Suffolk. Let's go.
and on to the Suffolk. So this one was a big, big surprise. I mentioned that I've spun quite a bit of it in roving form before. I used to live and be in contact with a shepherd in the area, like kind of near where we used to live, who had Suffolk and Polypay sheep. And she had a really cool shearing day every year, like invited the community. It was really fun and she was the nicest person. So I've spun quite a bit and this was nothing like what I've spun before. So I don't know what to think about it. I don't know if this is a more representative example. I don't know if what I had before was a more representative example. That was roving and this is top. So I also don't know how much the commercial prep had to do with it because this was just completely different from what I've spun before. Okay, so it's very pretty, you can see. And it is nice and squishy. I personally think this is soft enough for like a sweater. And I expected this to have just as much spring as the South Down. It did not. Not even close. And it was not, for me, quite as enjoyable to spin because of that. I kept the twist very, very low. And I could tell immediately while I was spinning it that if I got too much twist in it, it was going to turn into rope. So it was very unexpected. And it's like there's no crimp. You know, I love spinning. I think that's obvious. But I didn't love spinning this as much as many other breeds or even as much as I expected to because it's a down breed. However, it made a yarn that I do love. So I would do it for sure. I almost wish I had a second sample so I could try using a worsted draft and see if that made it more fun to spin. I don't think it would take away all the squish, but um, I don't want it to. Really anticipated feeling very similarly about the two of these. I really thought I'm gonna wanna buy a ton of both of these and I don't feel strongly like, ooh, I wanna run out and buy this, even though the yarn is nice. That's why we're doing this, because I have a lot I can still learn, right? Next week, we are going to spin, let's get it in focus for once, Swaledale. This is one I have never spun before and Targi, which is one that I have spun before. I have spun quite a bit. I don't think I've ever spun anything but Targi top. I don't think I've ever had roving, and I, I've had a Targi uh, cross fleece. It was a Lincoln Targi fleece. I actually dyed it and blended it on this channel, and I still have all the yarn. <laughs> it was for a sweater that I never knit. But it's, uh, it's still in my stash. You know, I think a lot of us spinners know how that goes. I'm looking forward to next week. I'll see you guys there when we continue the journey. Thanks, I love you, bye.